hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> mm, how is everyone doing? <laughs> well, here we are making the switch from nighttime to afternoon. My name's Kurt, and this is our uh, Monday afternoon live. And today we're going to be taking a look at this great landscape from Banff, uh, Canada. Uh, and I think it's called the Mystic River. So uh, yeah, come on, let's do this. <laughs> Let me go ahead and just hit you up with a couple different things here. Please do like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that so. Uh, also, we have a very robust and uh, active Facebook group where people uh, post all their drawings and they get a lot of help from everybody. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different classes that you could take and these are all are listed down in the description. But um, I come to you every Monday afternoon uh, about 2 o'clock Eastern Time. I, I live here in Pennsylvania, and I am a dad who draws. So my whole aim is to really help you succeed at drawing. That's what we do here. I do use a poke, I do use Procreate. Uh, pro <laughs> I use Procreate as an app and an Apple Pencil and an iPad. But you could use a pencil and just sketchbook. Most of my students do that, and you'll have just as much success. I've I've set up my uh, iPad to kind of resemble a sketch pad, and so hopefully the same lines that I create, you will be able to create as well. All right, glad you're here. Let's get started. All right. So in front of you here, here is the picture uh, that we're going to draw today. And hey, Pam, how are you doing? <laughs> And uh, what I want to talk about is, you may have heard this before, this idea of one they call atmospheric perspective. And what that means, let me, let me kind of demonstrate what that means. Let's say if you're standing right here and you're looking in this direction and way off in the distance you see some mountains, okay? Between you and these mountains are going to be atmosphere or outside sky. What's in the atmosphere, of course, is our water droplets, <clears throat> our water droplets. And as you see through these water droplets, the mountains in the distant are going to be um, more lighter in value. And that gives, um, we're used to seeing that. We've been looking at mountains like this for our entire lives. So um, this is a natural thing that happens. So when you do draw or paint mountains that are in the distance, you always want to try and do go after them with a lighter value. This will, this will help push them back further back into the distance. So here you can see, you actually can see that happening. If, if you look closely at the rocks here, these, are, these rocks are like right up close. <clears throat> hey, Edmund, how are you, my friend? <laughs> um, you can see that these rocks are closest to us. And, and so there's a lot of detail that you're gonna see, whereas the mountains that are far away are much more faint because of that atmospheric perspective. I would, I would also just throw out there that probably right now in this picture, because it's a sunny day, um, it doesn't look like there's a lot of atmosphere uh, in, in way of your view. So these mountains in the background aren't as light as they may be on another day. So anyhow, anyways, that's something to think about. The other thing I want to show you when, when you're drawing landscapes, um, let's say if you ever have been to a play where you've seen a show on a stage and you're sitting in the audience. So let's, let's pretend this is you sitting, uh, sitting in the audience and this here is your stage, okay? And you have an actor who's standing right here, okay? They're, they're standing and they're singing or something, something of the sort, right? And uh, behind them is a piece of scenery, right? And behind that might be another piece of scenery. And then behind that might be a curtain. 
So from your perspective here, from here, oh, from your perspective, uh, you might see something like this. So there is, there is your perspective. There is the actor on stage. So you might see a little bit of scenery here and a little bit of scenery back here. And then there's might be some more scenery behind that. So this is a really good approach how we um, uh, look at um, look at a landscape. If we think of like, oh, what's in front of which? What is in front of which? And you just kind of keep on going back, all right? So let's take a look at our picture here. And break this down just a little bit. All right, so I want you, I want to think I want to have you start thinking of things going back in space. Well, what is going on with this stream here, huh? It looks good on my end, but I don't know why it uh, seems to have frozen. So let's do this. Let's see if that helps. All right, we're going to keep going here. I, I think that's going to, that looks pretty good, actually. So I don't know what happened there, but we will, we will see where we go from here, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and start with uh, getting some type of border. And I always, I always like to start with the border. Uh, Whenever you're drawing straight lines, you want to try to draw from your elbow, okay? So let's go ahead and kind of gesture in at this point the shapes. And within the shapes, we will add more detail. So let's start with the front. At, down here at the bottom here, we have this, this rock that's kind of coming in place like this. You see this? Then then up here we have these trees that are coming in and be mindful that they come almost across the whole entire page here and then they go up with a sharp angle and keep this light and they come across. Just stay focused on the big, the big picture is what we're looking for. All right, then we got the edge of, of the forest and we've got this little slight ridge here, this tree line that's coming in. You see that? All right. Then we got this trees that are way in the back. You can't quite make out the trees, but you can make out the value in the hue or the color. And you got that mountain coming down. And then we got this huge mountain. It's kind of coming like this. Okay. <clears throat> you can even, I'm gonna extend the sky here just a little bit. There you go. All right. So this is the first thing I do is when I'm looking at a landscape I try and break it down into shape first, okay? Once it's in the shape, now I can start to go into more detail into each section. So <clears throat> let's start with these, let's start with these mountains up on top here, okay? And uh, these are gonna be the ones in the furthest. So first thing, as I look at this, this general shape here, 
uh, I could see the peak of these mountains. Look at that. It's like there's snow right below them. And if I look at the value that's on the snow versus the value of the mountains, the mountains are going to have a little bit more tone than the snow area. So let's just kind of casually drop in some tone here. And then I'm going to do the same underneath here. And I could kind of just outline the shape where I see that snow coming in. And I'm just going to go in here and add an even tone. Let's go in in here and now kind of work up some some details here. So first I could see that this mountain is going to be very rocky on top. So I'm just going to use my pencil here and get a little bit of a uh, of a jagged edge up there. <clears throat> now. When I'm looking at these mountains, this is this is what I'm thinking in my head. I'm not thinking of them flat per se, but I'm thinking of like, if you took, let me show you. If I took a piece of paper and I folded it like this, and I turn, look at that right there. Now that's a good example. So you see, as I folded that piece of paper, there's one side that's very bright in, its, in the way it's lit, and the other side is pretty dark. So as I'm drawing these mountains, this is what I'm going to think in my head. It's almost like it's like folds coming forward and back. So let's start, let's start adding some tone up here so we can actually see that. So I've got this side here maybe. And then I'm going to go with bright again and I'm just gonna work this all the way across this darker value until I get to where maybe it folds out again you see and then we'll go dark again so I'm just thinking of these folds coming in and out so let's let me show you a little detail thing here going on and I, I want you to remember this idea all right so here's here's a simple mountain range and let's say I've I've already determined that this is going like this okay now this down here, what, one thing I can do is I could just simply color that. You see that? So this, this, that doing that little move will make this area come in front of that. You see? So we can, we can kind of do that right here. All right. Let's take a look at that snow now and there's actually two values in that snow so let's let's come in here with a little bit of a lighter value but this is still going to be darker Okay, let's continue to work our way down this mountain here. It's it's a little bit more rugged as you can see as I
All right, let's bring in this now. Let's let's kind of break this down into shapes, and you can see where I'm going here with this. Trying to keep this as <clears throat> even as possible as I make my way across. trying to create variation here you want to be very careful not to make things like uh, exactly the same you know look look at my example down below here I, I wouldn't want to do this and then do this and then do this see these are too evenly these are too evenly spaced out that does not that doesn't look natural at all so you want to definitely try and make sure that you're making some variation here All right, let's continue here. I'm going to squint my eyes and okay, so this this little area <clears throat> this forest the area is also going to have a solid value to it. Now, now, if you look closely, there's actually like three values. There's a, a lighter green, a darker green, and then a real dark green. So let's, let's see what we could do here. So this is the darkest, and it's like the side of the trees, right? These are very close in value. <clears throat> these trees, these trees in the uh, rocks. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I've got this this mountain here. I'm going to use some maybe some surface lines here. continue on here and I like to keep squinting my eyes that's that's gonna help me to uh, uh, see what values are next and to see how the values are broken up <clears throat> Just 
putting some straight lines in here to help get the feel of the texture. <clears throat> the texture of these trees here. Remember, the key is um, value, value and variation. That's what we're kind of looking at when we do this stuff. I'm just constantly asking myself, What's the value? What's the value? What is the edge? Is it a hard edge? Is it a soft edge? See, uh, these, these, this background area, the mountains, the, the trees in the distance, and these trees that I just drew up close, there's not a lot of value difference there, okay? The first big value difference is going to come when we draw this block of trees here. So let's just bring in, bring this background value a little bit further all right let's go ahead and start to get in some of these shapes here Just use some straight lines right now to help give me an idea of where these trees are growing. So as I'm coming down the tree, you can see that it's, these are all very uh, triangle. And if you want to add some triangles to help give yourself a little guidance, by all means, just make sure you keep them nice and light. Just adding value here, that's all I'm doing. This uh, shoreline is very dark. Going with a light value for the tree and then follow it up with something very dark, darker values.
when I do these trees, I, I keep just these pine trees. I just keep thinking almost like a zigzag that's going through all the edges of the triangle. Right now it has this one tree that's in front of so it's sometimes I, I draw like I'm a watercolorist where I'll leave the negative space Okay, let's come in here and I'm gonna work on some of these ground rocks air rocks here. Look at this. You got a nice shape here and this Okay. Let's let's put another one behind that. And then there's some sloping grass or sloping dirt here and there's some smaller ones Probably gonna come back in with this with a little eraser here, just a little bit. How are you drawing the trees? Okay, great, great question, Pamela. I saw that. So usually I'm. I kind of start with a, a straight line here and then I'm thinking of like a zigzag a zigzag motion okay and they just keep getting a little bit larger so with my with my uh, zigzag here I just start kind of following it And then I, I'm grabbing my, uh, I start drawing more flat. You see that? And I'm creating a lot of variation in the thickness and thinness of my line. All of these rocks are going to have a certain amount of tone to it. And then you could go back into them and, and add some flats. All right, let's come into this, uh, these rock formations here.
right? What, what I'm thinking as I'm drawing these rocks, I'm drawing like an overall shape. And then I just come in here with like uh, the flat part of the top part. And then I'm just going to add some surface lines. So I get some variation. Same thing down here. Just look for one of these rocks. Then come down here with the side view. <clears throat> Same thing down here. Let's kind of get him in place. surface lines yep it's just taking each shape and breaking it down a little bit more You know, it's, it's it's like this idea where you might, uh, let's erase this for a minute. It's this idea where you say, okay, I'm going to draw a cube. All right, so there's, there's the shape of your cube. And then you'd kind of go in here and start to make some value changes. And now, now that, that cube takes on volume. Okay. So we're starting to develop the different pieces that we have going here. Look at Now look at this over here. Look at this tree that's kind of creeping in on the side here. But it's very light in value. I'm going to I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to make it dark in value. Because our light, our eye always goes toward whatever's light on the page. And if I, if I come in dark uh, on that tree creeping in there, your eye's going to want to go around it. And it's going to create a lot of interesting depth. All right. So that's just, I'm just kind of, when I'm drawing the branches, I'm just kind of doing this sort of thing like this. You see that? And then I just kind of go over it again. And you can even do it a uh, third time if you wanted to. <clears throat> Just leave some air in its leaves.
because it's up closer, I, I, I like to add some texture to it. That might include some pine needles, some single dots. Okay, I'm going to come all the way down like this. Too bad. Okay, I'm gonna come back in here with some more tone. Tone up here. And tone up here. Now, one thing when you're drawing water, you want to you wanna remember that the gravity is pushing, pulling down, pushing down that water. So the water is, even though it's like tumbling over, uh, the water is, is flat. Just keep thinking the weight of the water is pulling it down. So as we do our water here, let's, let's start off with just some flat horizontal lines. Okay. All right, now this water, look at this. This is all... I'm going to add some surface lines so we know what's going on down here. Let's think of this. Let's think of this water going back in space, and we're seeing like in phases. Okay, so for example, here's look at that rock is right there. You see that? All right, and it looks like we have some other waves coming in here. I'm just using surface lines to describe the form as it pours over things. come back in here and add a little bit of tone to my water. <clears throat> look at look at this this uh, uh, this line of rocks is so dark compared to that water. And even the shadowed area. And I can go come back in here and work out. All right.
I'm going to just add a light tone here to this one rock that is in the front and uh, actually add more tone to some of these in the back because I want this I want it to be separate from some of these other rocks but I don't want our eye to go to it because I want the, I want the eye to go toward this water over here you see what I mean I think I think we're gonna call it on this one this was not <clears throat> as difficult as last week's I'm gonna add some vegetation over here of course and it just has this last little rock coming in here all right I think it's going to do it for me. <laughs> so listen, I appreciate everyone watching today. Pam and uh, Edmund, thanks for checking in. Listen, post your work into our community, into the uh, Facebook group so we could take a look at it. And uh, this, is, uh, this is it for today's class in drawing landscapes with uh, a dad who draws. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.